Echo the Dolphin, a game made for the Sega Genesis that was developed by Appaloosa Interactive. The series have seen numerous ports along with few sequels throughout the 1990s in Sega's console history in the video game industry, but never managed to make a comeback, with the series' last game being Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future, releasing it in 2000 on the Sega Dreamcast, Sega's last console, and the PlayStation 2. This year actually sort of marks the 30th anniversary of the first Echo the Dolphin game, which came out in July 29th, 1992. This video isn't really about looking through the history of this game, nor is it a retrospective slash review on it. I'm more here to talk about this game's meaning and what it represents to people like me. From the looks of the game's cover, you probably wouldn't think much of it, getting more of an innocent, wholesome feeling vibe from it. Heck, the game does actually start off that way, playing around in the ocean as the titular character Echo with the rest of his dolphin friends. That is, until you launch yourself high into the air and then... Suddenly... Everything is completely turned on its head in a complete 180 move. Echo and his dolphin pals were taken by a big random storm wave that whisked them away in different places while leaving Echo all by his lonesome in the abyss of the deep sea. Now it's all up to Echo to find and save his dolphin friends to escort them back to their home all while facing off against many hazardous obstacles, terrifying sea creatures that will attack you, and all the sorts. All of this, as well with fighting for your life for air. Because interesting fact, as a dolphin, Echo can't stay underwater for too long. Otherwise, he'll drown into the abyss of the blue deep sea. Mind you, this, as well with traveling through time 500 years to the past to the sunken city of Atlantis and the prehistoric era with more hazardous obstacles to avoid and sea creatures attacking you, just so you can meet this globe-shaped thing that looks like DNA strands named the Astrolite for Echo to gain abilities like no longer requiring oxygen and using Echo's sonar to face off against enemies of the deep sea and to stop an alien race called the Vortex who have been constantly draining the Earth's life source for every 500 years. I'll get into what a Vortex is later. You travel back to your time just to return a glow piece to the Astrolite to complete a task it gave you in order to travel back in time again to the day that the tornado storm occurred. All to get aboard on the Vortex's ship. You travel through the Vortex's ship, hurtling through many obstacles again while fighting off many scary hordes of these little Vortexes. Yes, this is what a Vortex looks like. These things will attack you in every route that the camera from the game takes you automatically. When you finally get past every nook and cranny of this level, you'll be greeted to... This. That is the Vortex Queen. The one who rules over the entire Vortex alien race. Once you finish fighting the Vortex Queen, you escape the ship while seeing it get destroyed. You get back to the deep blue ocean with Echo's dolphin friends and live peacefully and happily now from the events that transpired. And after all of that, it finally came to me of what Echo the Dolphin's meaning represents to me. The Lassophobia. Most of you watching this video are probably wondering or asking yourself, what does that mean? The Lassophobia. An intense phobia, or fear, of large and deep bodies of water. You know, I think we sometimes take for granted how big the world is, and just how vast the ocean on Earth is, considering 71% of the Earth is made entirely of water. And another thing to think about is just how deep that body of water is, 
along with the many creatures that live underneath that are possibly yet to be discovered. A couple fascinating to some, or to others, shocking and horrifying. I don't think any other game comes close to this mindset other than Echo. The two I could say that comes the closest would either be the Bioshock series, more specifically 1 and 2, where the main premise of the game is that you go to an underwater utopia in the deep sea called Rapture, and while you don't really go underwater of sorts, or neither interact with the creatures in the deep sea, it does give that mindset of how grand everything is compared to you. And the Subnautica series, where, while never playing it, the whole point of the game it captures closely to what I was talking about. Nothing but you, in the deep, wide, open sea, filled with life of creatures. Some of which, you probably don't have knowledge about in the depths of the sea. So, to end off this video, I will leave you with this. Creepy, huh? That is a big fin squid. It lives physiologically at depths ranging from 3,200 to 19,600 feet, and is also believed to be at least 26 feet tall. And for a size comparison, this is the normal height of a human, and here is the normal height of the squid. And the most scary thing to add on top of that, we really don't know that much info about it, and can only go off a few speculations on its nature. And this is below the deep sea. So the next time you visit the ocean, always remember how grand and deep it is compared to you, as well as the many sea life inhabitants that will most likely want to harm or eat you. Happy Halloween.